What's up, fellow Actitos? So, as you can see, there is a white Honda Acti behind me at the moment. I also bought a much, much higher quality mic. So, hopefully, it sounds better than that other um, super cheap garbage one I bought that sounded like I was talking into a sock or something. <laughs> so, I already did it, but I wanted to just do like a, some tips um, and maybe some helpful hints when replacing the timing belt kit or doing a timing belt kit on the Honda Acti because it gets a little, gets a little tricky with space and all that with uh, everything in there, removing covers and such. And then I'm going to do um, the coolant. Obviously, when you do the water pump, all the coolant comes out. So now I need to refill the system and then kind of bleed it. So I didn't see a whole lot of videos on the coolant system aspect of it, but there's a ton of videos on the timing belt and all that. So it was just going to be a waste of time for me to do a timing belt change video when everybody else has already done it. And I was just going to give my opinion on it. So if you're in the mood or thinking about doing it or, you know, kind of nervous about doing it, um, it's not as bad as you think it might be. It was quite simple. Honestly, the hardest part was dealing with all the covers and the plastics. And probably the next hardest thing is bleeding the coolant system. So that's what I'm hopefully going to be able to show to make it easier for you. Because again, I didn't see a whole lot of videos. I think K's K's did it, but he did a whole um, engine flush, coolant flush. I'm just topping it up topping it off so we're not going to the extreme that he did so anyways um let me i have the wheel off still i gotta put the wheel on so we can jack up the front and stuff for the coolant but i wanted to show some stuff while i got it off so hopefully this will be somewhat useful okay so first off you're going to need to jack the engine up or you're going to need to put it on a jack I would try not to use jack stands because you're going to need to be lowering and raising the engine to access bolts easier. Um, it will save you a ton of headache trying to get the stupid covers off and all that stuff. Um, so I use a jack with a 2x4 and I just put it right underneath the flat spot on the pan there so it wasn't you know, I'm not bare metal on um, the jack. For the most part, when you lower the engine, you have your radiator hoses right here coming in. And that's kind of like a strap almost. You can only lower this thing so far before those hoses start trying to hold the engine up, which obviously you don't want to put a lot of stress on those rubber hoses. So I don't recommend using that as like your limit. These guys right here. Try not to uh, stretch out those hoses as you could possibly, I don't know, rip them or something, do some damage. So just keep that in mind when you're raising and lowering the engine. So uh, what, I, what I did was obviously you take this cover off first. It's just, you know, four Phillip head screws. This pops off and then you can take the three little 10 millimeter bolts out of your dipstick and don't pull it out because otherwise you're going to drain all your oil unless you want to do an oil change that's totally fine then pull it out and there's your drain plug but basically all you want to do is just turn it twist it down it's got an o-ring in there so you can turn it down it's not a gasket so it's you can swivel this thing i swiveled it so it was pointing to, towards the ground and completely out of the way and then you can start by unsnapping. This one's actually missing the snap here, but you just unsnap all these snaps. And so the tricky part about getting this big one off here is the alternator. Your alternator is going to uh, pretty much just be in the way. So you, you kind of battle that for a little bit, but you unbolt the alternator, which uh, again, I can't remember. This front cover comes off. This back one is the one that you'll battle with. So you get this off, then you take the front cover off. 
and that just kind of exposes all your pulleys and your belt for your alternator. When you get to this back cover, the one that's actually bolted to the block in the engine, that's when you're going to want to try it. Not try. You're going to need to unbolt and finagle the alternator out. And this is why it's good to have a engine using the jack because you're going to need to lower the engine as much as you can to be able to get that cover off. I battled with that cover for quite some time and it was very frustrating, but once you figure it out, you'll get it. So you just make sure you get your alternator off. Alternator's real easy. There's a bolt here. There's one bolt there. And then you'll, you know, you remove the motor mount and you'll remove the actual bracket holding the motor mount. I would actually just start with the motor mount first, get that out of the way, and then start working on everything else. Again, the cover just takes a little bit of jacking up the engine, lowering the engine, because some of the bolts, like that guy right there, it's basically in line with the, with the frame. So if you lower the engine, then you can get in there. So it's just a matter of raising and lowering the engine safely to get all the bolts out and the motor mount. And this is a good time. This motor mount is shot, so I ordered new motor mounts for them to put in here. Um, and then I'll check the rest. But this one usually goes bad because it's going up and down. So that one's completely ripped. So I just put it back in for the time being so I can obviously do the cooling and everything back together. But this video is not showing you how to do it. There's plenty of other videos. KK's got one right hand drive uh, Don or right hand drive Ron. He's got a good video. There's some other videos um, if you just look up Honda Acti timing service. But I just wanted to give some tips on just lowering and raising the engine. And it was quite it was quite easy to replace everything once you get all the covers off. Um, I did make a note. Your water pump bolts are about 10 foot pounds, which is, I put it at about 100 and, I did 120 inch pounds because my foot pound doesn't go that low. So 120 inch pounds for the water pump bolts, there's four. And then the idler and the tensioner is about, it's about 33 foot pounds. So you just make sure you torque your idler and your tensioner and your water pump back so everything's nice and then the tension on the belt was really just letting that spring just kind of pull down on the belt you don't want it tight it it's floppy it's a little floppy on the up hand it's just when you get from here where the water pump is to the cam gear that's where you want it to be tight and then obviously tight to your um your crank your crank pulley so just if it's floppy that's totally fine the top part is floppy this part not floppy and then you just line everything up again watch those videos it tells you where to line up your your marks so when you take the belt off you don't accidentally move anything and you know how to get it back into the correct position engine always turns counterclockwise so make sure that when you're cranking it to get the timing marks lined up it's counterclockwise there's an arrow on the oil pump in there that points to a certain uh like cog so you just make sure you stay on that cog and then up there uh there's some marks again the videos that there that are out there will do a better job explaining that so again raising lowering i also did a new valve cover gasket because the cover is actually there's a lip on your valve cover that slips over the upper part of the timing cover. So I just, again, replaced this whole valve cover gasket because he did one and it was still leaking really bad. So I'm not entirely sure what happened, but we should be okay. I ran it. I don't, there's no oil down there, completely dry. So I think, I think we're okay. I'm not sure what happened on the last one. Maybe the bolts weren't tight enough, but you got to take your valve cover off or move it up anyways to slip it out from under that little uh, catch on the valve cover there. But again, it's not, not that bad of a job. It took, you know, just a few hours to get everything off and back on. And then 
yeah, valve cover and all that stuff. So I think, honestly, I think the hardest part was this, were the covers, just trying to get them back in and figuring out how you got them out and just make sure you put all the bolts back and just pay attention to which bolts came off where because some are certain lengths that are different. So just pay attention and then just remember your torque specs for the water pump and the idler and the tensioner. Um, and now we're going to be doing the coolant. So I went and got some coolant. So the Acti's a little funky compared to like the sandbars and whatnot. So sandbars, coolant reservoirs underneath the seat. Acti's are up here against the um, front of the cab basically. So I just removed the lower portion of the dash, which is like five screws, five Phillip head screws, real easy. So now we have, and then you take this cover off obviously and the cap off. And so you have full access to your radiator. So we're going to fill it up, fill it up. And then we're obviously going to have to bleed it. So on the trucks, the vans are slightly different. The vans, I think there's like a, I forget how the van is. Mine's an automatic. So it has like a thing, a tube here. That's a bleeder, but the trucks just have these two little, uh, like little nipples on the intake manifold. So you'll crack those open. Obviously let some coolant pop out of it. So you can get all the air out. You jack the front up because we want that to be at the highest point. So air will go up to the front in theory. Also, I forgot to mention when you uh, are putting your truck on jack stands, don't use the rear like axle, uh, whatever you want to call it, the rear drive axle. It's not really an axle, but don't use that to uh, keep the truck you know, off the ground because that's going to push the leaf springs in the way. Just use where the leaf springs bolt to the frame. So then you can get full droop on the rear suspension and the leaves don't get in the way because the leaves will get in the way and you'll be battling the leaf springs. And also, if you're confused or forget about uh, torque specs and all that stuff, um, this book, the James Danko book, you can get it on like Amazon. It's got all the torque specs and stuff like that. It's all in obviously metric, so you can just convert it. Um, but it will tell you pretty much everything for the most part that you need to know. It doesn't really explain much on how to bleed the cooling system other than those two little bleeders back there and the torque spec, which is about roughly Let's say 100 inch pounds if you want to torque them back um but basically it says <laughs> open those up and shake the truck and get the air out so <laughs> we'll uh, get the truck to do a little do some torquing for us and see if we can get some some more air out of it but okay I'm back putting the wheel on okay so got the front end jacked up pretty high i'm already kind of on a slant so it just adds a little bit with the jack so hopefully in theory all that air will go up to the cab and come out of there or some of this good goodness juice in there okay so it already filled up which thank goodness these things just cycle right to the floor because otherwise you get cooling everywhere um got it to the point where it was full went to the back cracked open the uh bleeders and instantly a bunch of air came shooting out of that thing or air came out. So, and now I think it's back down again. So we'll keep filling it up. It's actually a little bit difficult with that funnel. It's kind of just easier if you uh, pour it in there when it gets to a certain, gets to a certain level, you can just pour it with this thing. And we'll just keep checking the bleeders in the back. Oh, we're getting leaking now, so Whoop. little geysers. So our little geysers back there, our little geysers started spouting some, our little water fountains started spitting cooling out, so all the cooling is in there as much as we can get. I'm going to move this out of the way before I kick it. It's annoying. Check up here. It went back down. We're going to put some more cooling back in there and just keep... Keep filling it up. We don't want 
the cool it in the cab, man. Slowly going back down. Let's check the bleeder porties. You guys can see what I'm talking about. So we'll crack these these guys open again. Coolant's coming out of that one. Cooling out of that one. So I would say most of the air is probably out at that point. So now we gotta run it and uh run it and get try to soak some of this cooling up. Okay, so I got those just tightened snugged up so now we're going to run it and then we'll turn the heater on and then we'll keep an eye on the temperature gauge and then we'll crack it open and we'll add more as we go and yeah see what happens already burbled out of it now that it's running through there in the water pump so let's get it back up in there again let it bubble back down temperature gauge isn't going up quite yet but we're still adding coolant bubbles are coming up so that's good come on bubblies and I probably dropped like maybe one of these a gallon not very much so hopefully it takes just one of those to fill the system back up air's getting warm a couple more bubbles give your truck a little bit of a shake every once in a while some bubbles will come popping out of there and then the level will drop let's see what are we at oh we're almost to the midpoint let's, let's see here so there's my coolant level right at the top we're getting to the midpoint there so we're getting there, then I'll turn on the heater. Our bleeders are closed right now because all the coolant, it seemed like all the air came out. So I think it's just a matter of filling the system up and we should be okay. I'm just gonna cap it right now. And then we'll keep an eye on the, the needle. We'll make sure it doesn't get up past halfway, obviously, which would be no bueno. And then we'll run the heater, make sure we got hot air. I'll torque these back down or tighten these back up because they're just kind of snug right now. But man, that engine sounds good. Sounds happy. Okay, so we got some hot air blowing sitting right in the middle, so that's good. That thing is the cap. We're sitting right at the top right there, so that's good. So the trick to bleeding it, jack it up in the front so air can rise to the top. Just come back here while it's running, crack these open, some air will come out and you can keep checking that as it's running. So I cracked these open like, I don't know, six or seven times and quite a bit of air would come out of that one and then all of a sudden cool it started coming out and I'd close it. And so I would just kind of keep checking the bleeders and keep checking the cap our reservoirs at max so that's good we're not getting past the middle point so that's good so it's just bleeding's not too bad it's just a matter of going back and forth cracking those bleeders open letting it warm up blah 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 just takes a little bit takes a little bit of time but uh, I'm going to go take it for a test drive and see how I do and make sure we don't overheat, which I don't think it should, but just to uh, double check before we let it go. Success. Uh, I took it out for a test drive. Needle sitting right below the halfway point and I'll let it cool down. I'll let it cool down and then I'll check uh, the radiator up under the the dash again see what the level's sitting at but not bad i thought it was going to be really tricky i've heard people had a really hard time bleeding their coolant systems and i don't know that was real easy just crack those little bleeders open go back and forth checking your levels not real hard to do turn your heater on when it gets warmed up 
Um, otherwise, it's going to take a really long time to warm up trying to run that heater when it's cold. Um, but really not that difficult at all. And yeah, so timing kit was done on this. So that's the belt, tensioner, idler, and water pump. Um, seals were good. Did a valve cover gasket because that was leaking. So if you need any of those parts, I have those in my store. Uh, hopefully my mic was working better today. It's green, so I think that means it's working. Um, but yeah, okgarage.com. I got all that stuff if you're in the mood to work on your Acti. Hopefully that was helpful. I know I didn't really show how to do it, but just some tips to save some frustration. Just be prepared to be battling some plastic covers. Take your time. Be patient. Um, I still... I still like my sandbar better, <laughs> but yeah, not too bad. So cool. Take it easy, guys. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Again, check out the other videos, Right Hand Drive Dawn and K's K's. And there's some other guys I can't remember that have videos on doing the whole thing and not just giving pointers like I did. But hopefully that bleeding the coolant made a little sense. Cool. Take it easy, guys.